Welcome to episode number 17 of The Roar, the show for all things Hershey Cubs, players, coaches, personnel, and news. I'm Joshua Gerhardt, your host and broadcaster for the Cubs. Joining us today are the keepers of the cage. That's right. We got Johnny DiClemente, we got Luke Schaub, and we got Eric West. Thank you for joining us today, fellas, and how are we doing? I'm doing sensational, man. Thank you for having us on. <laughs> this is an absolute buddy. squad right here. You know, we got... Some of the best goaltenders in the USHL right here, the USPHL. But you fellas have had a fantastic year so far, especially you, Shavi. A great win you just had over Brooklyn. You know, and yep. Johnny, you've had a great season so far in Westy, man. It sucks to see your injury, but I believe I believe you're returning soon, right? Soon, hopefully. There it is. The King's long way back. to return. No injury can hold him down, baby. <laughs> you can't you can't hold a good man down. And ladies and nope. gentlemen, the roar attack. We'll be back between the pipes soon. That's right. Eric West coming back to a theater near you. But um, so we'll kind of just jump right into it here. But can you all provide the listeners with some background knowledge on your career prior to joining the Cubs? You know, where did you play at? What was the level of difficulty where you played at? And just take it from there, guys. I'll just start. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, whoever wants to start goes ahead. I don't. It's three people, so y'all can figure that one out. So uh, for the past two years, I've been playing AAA over at the Rockets and uh, great experience, met a lot of great people, you know, really molded me into the person I am today, faced a lot of adversity, but, you know, made me a better person and a uh, better athlete due to it. And uh, yeah, it's my first year playing juniors and yeah. You liking it so far? Oh, I'm loving it, dude. It's it's fantastic. Good. Westy, we'll go down to you next. <laughs> it's your, the, the one right beneath uh, Johnny here. All right. Uh, I've been playing AAA since 15U. Um, it took me from Palmyra the whole way out to Philly, um, traveling, you know, two hours to practice, three days a week. Um, it's just been, it's been a train ride. It's been fun. It's good to see a lot of places and have fun with a lot of people I never really would meet if I didn't do anything like that. And as yeah. much as it pains me to say this, Wesley does have one Bears Cup. Took the ring right off my finger there. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, buddy. I really appreciate yeah. that one. But uh, yeah, you guys had a good team that year. I will say that. Played with Lower Dolphin. You were yeah. captains on that team. Fantastic, fantastic season. Um, so Westy's definitely made an impact yeah. so far this season with the Cubs as well. Um, and then Chavi, what about you, brother? Where have you been at? Uh, so I'm from Maryland. I'm a DMV boy. Shout out uh, Alex Couture. I actually played with him last year. I was about to so, say, you know Couture well? Yep. Yep, we went yeah. to the same high school for two years, and we um played on the same club team, just a different age. But yeah, I came from playing uh, double A, and we played uh, high school hockey. Shout out Archbishop Spalding. Uh, so it was it was a good experience. Nice nice little run in high school. Won uh won one of our championships last year, so it was a good good memory to end it on. And uh, yeah, the uh, love love this year. This year's been awesome. Love meeting the guys. Uh, goalies are amazing uh yeah it's great <laughs> now great group we got here yeah we do got a great group here so you know that kind of segues well into our next question so besides the candy right besides being you know the willy wonka capital of the world i guess you could say what were some influential factors and in, you know why you chose hershey for your next landing spot in juniors we'll start with shabby on this one okay <laughs> yeah, I like the pressure. Let's go. Uh, so <laughs> you're a goalie, man. Come on. I, used to yeah, <laughs> I think uh, just this was actually the only tryout I went to. So I yeah. applied to University of Maine and I was going to go there, but I was like, might as well try to see if I can play juniors, give it a shot. Went to the tryout. Everything worked well. Uh, I already knew Patty. I knew our goalie coach. Love Patty. Great guy uh and yeah so i everything worked out really well and i was like you know what might as well play your juniors have some fun so that's what i'm doing uh the big drawing was um uh just the this it's a really nice hockey town and especially with the bears winning the cup last year yep. really really huge really helped i stayed up really really late a lot for a lot of those <laughs> games but yeah so just a big hockey town it was it was pretty much a no-brainer so funny story about the Bears winning the cup and me staying up late. I was actually on my European vacation during their Calder Cup run. Uh, and we were actually in Switzerland during game seven of the Calder Cup playoffs, which was kind of crazy because if you guys know anything about the time differences over there, yeah. 
I think if I'm correct or wrong, I'm not the greatest at math, but I'm pretty sure Switzerland is like six or eight hours ahead of what, what, what we're at here. So when it was you guys is 12 o'clock a.m., it mm-hmm. was my nine o'clock a.m. in the morning. So when it was your midnight, it was my <laughs> next day already. Yeah, that's rough. So I was Isn't in it? this hotel running around with the phone up to my ear, listening to Zach Fish. Shout out to Zach Fish. Great call in that game. You know, listening and just hoping and praying they'd capitalize it over time so I wouldn't have to spend the next couple of weeks on my vacation depressed. Yeah. yeah. You know, I hear Mike Vecchioti puts it in and I'm running around the hotel. And keep in mind, it's like a four star hotel, right? So yeah. me running around the hotel screaming, we won the cup, we won the cup <laughs> was, was quite the interesting look for all these Europeans who probably already have their uh, judgments on Americans already. <laughs> <laughs> but Wes, we'll go over to you then. Well, uh- I mean, last year I ended up not playing AAA. I ended up coming home my senior year, just playing high school. Um, and I already knew Patty, knew Brennan, knew Colin. I knew just about everyone. Um, and they were someone I talked throughout the year to keep me on the ice. And it sort of spiraled into like, what do you think about next year, the year after that? And it just spiraled and here I am. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of here happens. Now, Staten Island native up top. How'd you come to Hershey, man? So uh, it's a it's a weird story. So I wasn't time. supposed to play juniors this year. I was supposed to play another year, at, uh, my first year at 18U, AAA with Mercer. Okay. But uh, something happened at tryouts with the coach. And the day before tryouts was placed, the coach left. And it left me in a situation where I couldn't really go there because I didn't know the guy too well. And I wasn't sure. So I was basically ready to, you know, just play high school and just have fun. And then uh, I talked to a couple people, good buddies of mine, Phil Garcia, Jimmy Ayuchi, and uh, Marco Taffo and his father. And they basically told me to keep playing hockey and go to some tryouts for junior, junior teams. And I went to the Hershey Cubs tryout and I made it. And the rest is history. The rest is indeed history. You've had a fantastic career so far with the Cubs. You all, the goal, I honestly, I know I've only been with the Cubs one year full year fully, but I mean, I might go as far in saying we probably might have the deepest goaltending core in the entire Atlantic division. I mean, you guys can speak more on that than I can, but I mean, would you That's guys, the that? Brand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like this, <laughs> this core is like, it's so tight. And like you guys encourage one another, like the way, like talk about the way you guys practice, right? I'm sure it's very encouraging. And you guys lift each other up, right? So something else is actually Johnny and I played spring games against each other. We played a single spring game against each yeah. other. And so we, we tried out together. We, we actually bonded immediately over the tryouts. We loved each other and uh, it was, it was great. And then, so we, we, uh, I ended up playing a spring tournament and I had no idea John was in this. So I just, I heard from some of my teammates talking and they're like, oh, uh, their goalie is a Cubs guy. So me and Alex are on one team and John's on the other team. And I remember thinking like, huh, interesting. So I went up, dapped him up, said what's up. And he yeah, ever since, then, <laughs> ever since then, it's been pretty automatic. And uh, yeah, we actually won, just saying. Uh, flex but bottom flex autumn, yeah. All right. But uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no. But in practice, everything. I think the big thing is just, I mean, making sure obviously we're working hard, but keeping it light, keeping it like. Well, at the end of the day, we're having fun. We're all friends, so there's no reason to be too competitive. Too, you know, like I mean, obviously, night. It's nice to compete, but just have each other's backs because, like. These guys are my boys, and I know M.A. is not here, but M.A. is my boy, too. So We love M.A. We Absolutely. Love MA. So just support everybody. And yeah. Absolutely. You know, so this is going to be an interesting response to this because as a forward, you know, I can never fathom the idea of making a career out of getting in a vulcanized piece of rubber shot at your head for a living, right? So there has got to be a reason as to why all of you want to get pucks shot at your dome for a living. So who or what inspired you to play between the pipes? And we'll start with Westy on this one. I didn't even start out playing hockey. That was the thing. I played football when I was a kid. What position I, were you? Uh, I got to ask. I, I, my dad was a big football player. My dad liked to play football. And so he did what he coached. So when I was young, I played football, but one Christmas, I got a little learn to skate as a lesson, 
<laughs> went to learn to play hockey and I started as a player and just drifted to the net. And then it literally took a single coach to just be like, you want to be a goalie? And I was full oh, seven. Oh, I was, I was like, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it just kept going. Dude, that's, that's crazy. I can never imagine. Like I'm sure kids play goal younger than that, but seven, man, that's crazy. Yeah. And I started pretty late to the game. So that's, that's, that's mind blowing to me. And Johnny, we'll go up to you here. Yeah. So, uh, my, my story is a little bit different than my father's story. I remember very vividly me seeing a, a poster that says, try out hockey, try playing goalie. And so I tried it out, but my dad recalls the story as you just didn't like to skate that much. So you played goalie. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, me and him still, we go back and forth with it, you know, very debatable. And then, uh, one uh, one practice that really got me uh, to stay in that my uh, my coach at the time Dom Sacco he was like, "Are you sure you want to do this? Because it's weird getting the puck to the head." And I was like, "Yeah, I don't like to skate." <laughs> <laughs> at least you were honest, right? I mean, didn't lie, dude. Honestly, I got to tell you, one of the funniest stories from my time with the Cubs was meeting your father, dude. I was in tears. It was the first time I was ever with you guys. I was trying to learn all the guys' names, and I was really struggling to try and learn all the guys who were, you know, from you know Canada and Quebec. I was making sure I got all their names right and not saying Rufinac instead of Rufinac, all right? So I was in my learning curve era. But it was after one of the games you played, and I think it was the Rockets game. Did you play the Rockets game? Yeah, I yeah, believe so. so. When, you, when you guys came back against the Rockets, apparently your dad must have loved how I called that game. So I'm not even joking, dude. I was literally walking to go to the bathroom of all places, to go to the bathroom of all places. This guy who I swear to God sounded like he was in the Italian mafia. Right. And I, I, I'm from, I'm from, I do, I have mafia, my family, I'm Italian. I get it. He walks up to me. He goes, Hey you dude. He doesn't even know me. He looks at me. He goes, he's like to point at me. I'm like, Oh no, what I say, what I do wrong. Did I, did I say something wrong? And then he goes, you the guy, man. You the guy. I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah. If it's a good thing, yeah. But dude, your dad, your dad's awesome. Your dad is yeah, awesome. my dad. Yeah, my dad's the man. You know, he's amazing guy. He, yeah, he's yeah. quite the character. So shout out to uh Papa D Clemente if you're watching this for your uh your great character and great great kid on the other end here. But you know, so Johnny, what were um what what's the reason you want to get shot in the head with the puck all the time, brother? I'll be honest here. I don't really know. I'm pretty sure I forgot it a long time ago. It just, I just stuck with it and it's kind of fun. And I like fun. And I love, uh, and I love running my father up a big bill. So Uh, (laughs) that's not fair to your poor dad, man. Come on. It's all right. He knew what he, he knew what he was signing up for. He's probably got to pick up some extra shifts, man. That ain't fair to your poor pops. (laughs) <laughs> yeah my dad I, but i will say this my father is my biggest supporter and i know and i don't take anything for granted oh my god about that guy yeah so and then luke you know talk to us about this i mean goalie is it's a crazy position i'm just gonna leave it at that yeah uh so <laughs> basically my 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 big story for being a goalie is i actually never wanted to be a player never really? so i i grew up as a big washington capitals fan because i'm from maryland and uh Huge Caps fan, huge everything. I have Caps posters. Uh, they're behind me, but can't see them. Whatever. Uh, so I actually grew up watching Simeon Varlamov play and love that guy. Still love that guy to this day. Very good goaltender. But I would sit in my living room and watch on the TV and make saves with a tennis ball, the same saves he was making, and like throw it out against a wall and try to make it. And then started playing in mites. I was maybe like six or seven. And then I would I would be in player gear, but I would always just be in the net. And then in, in so, player gear, yeah, yeah, I just like lay down and try to stop pucks. And Bro's so fearless, yeah. I mean, you kind of have to be, if, to be a goal. Fearless or dumb, I don't really know. But <laughs> we're gonna go with fearless. <laughs> yeah, so I would always do that. Um, skated uh, skated out a little bit, not too much. I mean, I think it's fun, but I think goalie's more fun. But um. Last time I skated out, scored a goal, just saying. So I ended on that. So it was in squirts. It counts. It counts. Yeah. It counts. You know, that kind of segues, segues well into our next question. And this is an interesting one. I want to see you guys debate on this one. 
out of all of you guys here, right, out of all of you guys here, who do you predict would score a goalie goal in the USPHL? Uh, I see Johnny's hands up first. Yeah. He's pretty confident. But I would say definitely Wesley. He has a rocket. I've never, dude. He his shot is unreal. I've never really? met a goalie that can play the puck as good as Wesley. And I'm not. I'm not just like saying that to say that. I Wesley's a very I'm good puck. Scared. It's also because his paddle's 27 inches long, and that is like incredibly 27 long. inch long paddle, brother. That's incredible. That's probably taller than me. It yeah, it's huge. It, <laughs> it can probably yeah. Dude, honestly, though, I'm going to tell you the next time you get in the net, I mean, Brendan probably wouldn't be happy if I told you this, but next time you get that puck, shoot it. Just shoot it. See what happens. <laughs> what could go wrong? What could I go was going there? for one uh, in the, I believe it was Buffalo game, the two recent ones at home. There was one, uh, the first game, I believe we were up to, and they pulled their goalie. And my first thought, I came back to the bench. I think I told Johnny, I think Johnny was on the bench. And I just remember telling him, like, if it comes to me, I'm ripping it. I don't care Dude, what happens. You should have. That'd have been awesome. It didn't come to me. I would have. I would have ripped it. I don't have a good shot either, so it probably oh, would have hit you my. You just D-man. gotta do it, man. You just gotta stop thinking and rip it. Hey, it's worth. It's Dude, worth. The dad K would have ate that. They, they would have ate that 100%. thing. Dude, that would have been all over their profile for sure. For sure. Absolutely. But have you guys ever scored a goalie goal before? Like, have you seen anyone do it before, or is it just just not? My my old high school goalie did. He was uh he's a junior this year i'm pretty sure pretty big too he's six three i'm five ten so six three Dude, i wish but uh nice kid he he just he just got the puck ripped it and went in so it's pretty cool that's awesome well so and you guys and we'll start with johnny on this question then so in your eyes what is the toughest aspect of playing the position of goaltender what makes it so difficult go ahead johnny uh definitely the mental aspect especially in games where you don't see a lot of action and the only action you see is high quality opportunities. So it's just it's raw. It's it's a little difficult, but you just got to stay mentally sharp. And yeah, it's more of just like staying. Sh- yeah, I hear a lot of times when I talk to goalies, they say the mental game is equally as tough as the physical game. And you know, yeah. I heard that time time after time again. Wesley, can you speak more on this question then? Yeah, it's just it's it is the mental side. It's just as hard, if not harder. It's just. There are things you just can't control, whether it's deflections off your D, literally just hitting someone in the body and going into that, and you just have to try and refocus yourself into that and just get ready for that next chance, that next shot, without letting it really get to you, because then you're just going to spiral down. Yeah, absolutely. Shabby, take it away. 100%. Same thing. Don't mean to sound like a broken record, but mental oh. side is way, mental side's way more important, in my opinion, because everyone can get in front of something it's whether you're scared or not it's everyone can play reverse dodgeball if they want to it's not that it's not that hard but uh the whole like the other thing is especially in juniors like playing uh and there's only one net right so like building the confidence and keeping your confidence when you're not playing a bunch of games is really really key just to be like hey like i know i'm not getting up like i'm not getting this but like Hey, I know I'm good. I know it's going to come. I just have to keep working hard and that kind of thing. So it's just so much. It's all, it really is all confidence. And if you have confidence, you're going to make big saves. Yeah. I was going to ask you guys, you know, you know, only one goalie is allowed to play the game, right? One goalie is allowed to play. One goalie is allowed to dress. And you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, there's four goalies on your roster, right? So that means two of you at least are not even suiting up a game at all, right? So how do you manage to support your teammates even if there's times where you're not playing and you wish you were, how does that process kind of work? And I know we'll go with Shabby on this one first. I know you touched upon that, but yeah, so definitely it's just, it boils down to being like being a good person and just loving your teammates. Like I love, I love John so much. John's one of a kind. Westy's one of a kind. MA's one of a kind. They're all, they're all great guys. They're all great goaltenders. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really nice to like, uh, just watch your friend succeed. So it's it's not like a I, at no point do I get jealous or any of that stuff because I would just I'm just happy for like I'm genuinely happy for MA to get the net all the time, Johnny to get the net all the time, Westy to get the net all the time. I want them to succeed. Like truly I do want them to succeed. Westy and Johnny, what's your take on this then? Yeah, absolutely. It also goes back to what we were saying about practice, you know, just our but 
when we're up against each other in practice in games, it doesn't matter. It's not me versus Luke, me versus Westy, me versus MA. It's me versus myself, and it goes to the same. So I know I'm doing my best, and that's all that really matters. And all the pieces are gonna fall into long into line and at the end of the day these are my boys i wouldn't want to go to war with anybody else so their success is my success and that's that's a great way to say it johnny westy yeah i don't really know what else there's to say it's just wanting them to do their best and just being there for them and when it is your chance they're there for you and just being that guy and being good with them absolutely so how would you define your style of play, right? Goalies play a you know, variety of different ways, whether it's butterfly, stand-up, or hybrid. Which one are you and why? And Westy, we'll start with you. Uh, eh, probably more of like a butterfly hybrid. I use my athleticism a lot more. Mm. Um, being bigger, I tend to play a little bit on the deeper side, not quite as fast as probably like Johnny or Shabby. Um, but I can get up. I can use that size a little bit more. And that just sort of helps my case. It's not really something that you can teach all that much. Yeah, absolutely. Johnny, your take on this then? Uh, I would say I'm more butterfly and I rely heavily on my athleticism. Mm. And it's been working out pretty well. So I, I would agree with that. I'd agree with that. I, I don't yeah. Think, yeah, don't um, fix it if it's not broken. So I'm pretty much the same as Johnny, big butterfly guy. Uh, love uh use the athleticism pretty well i use a lot of athleticism i try my hardest uh so it's just it's also the thing with being a smaller goalie is you just have to be a little bit a little bit faster a little bit more like able to move so and i like to pride myself on my sliding side to side i like to do that pretty well but yeah that's about it now speaking of your movement and you know one thing that goes along with the movement is the flexibility I myself am not flexible. I'm like a stick, right? I can't bend. If I, if I bend, I'm just going to break, right? So I have no flexibility at all whatsoever. So walk me through some of your training methods on how you guys are able to become contortionist between the pipes. Uh, I would say uh, just stretching out a lot and taking care of your body. And uh, if something is, not, I wouldn't even say hurting you, but I remember, not hurting you, but like a little pain. I remember I went to a camp a couple of years ago and he said, your body, the coach said, your body tells you things and listen to the whispers. So those whispers don't become screams. That is a great way to kind of, you know, break You're that mentality into your head. Yeah. You know, I try out here just spitting wisdom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wesley and I actually had a talk about this uh, during TPD camp at the beginning of the year, and we were talking about how often we stretch. And I, I'm, I'm of a, uh, I'm a very, very flexible person just in general. Probably we were talking about this today. I was saying like, widest hips, widest butterfly in, in the prem, widest, widest hips in the prem. You know, so I stretch uh, before practice, after practice, uh, and uh, at night. So awesome. lots of stretching. Lots of stretching. Westy, lots of stretching for you as well. Yeah, it's just trying to keep my big body limber. And you know, especially <laughs> now, it's trying to just keep that flexibility I had before surgeries. Now, yeah, I know so you've been I know back. you've been I know you've been on the injured reserve lately. So how has that been for you, you know, mentally wise? I'm sure it's been tough, but talk us through your recovery process, right? What does that look like for you? And how are you staying up to date on everything you need to do to get back in the game? It's just, it's a lot of PT. Um, mental side, it's a lot of trying to still be around the guys. I try to get to every home game. Um, I try to travel when I can, when I'm allowed to. And it's just still that aspect of feeling a part of the team, even if I'm not able to play. Absolutely. So, you know, I have witnessed all of you make desperation saves throughout the entirety of the season. So what does it take to come up large when you're one-on-one -on -one with the shooter, how do you guys attack a breakaway situation? I'll start this one with Johnny up top. Uh, just come out and match his speed mm. and be confident. Just know that no matter which scenario it is, you're going to have the advantage if you have the mindset that I'm going to make this save no matter what. Mm. And if he scores, that's a part of the game, you know? <laughs> if he scores, it happens. Just, just shake it yeah. off and get ready for the next one. Westy, your take on this one? Yeah, it's just getting that depth and matching him and just 
trying to wait him out and make him make that move and be able to mirror it in. And I mean, if, like Johnny said, if he scores, it's a breakaway. That's a good chance. Yeah, absolutely. Shabby, what about you on this one? Same thing. Uh, match the speed. Match and speed is huge. Uh, I mean, a lot of the practice in practice, we get a lot of breakaways like for warm up drills and stuff. And our teammates really never score like like this kid over here, Alex Kachari, you wanted to pop in and say hi. But I'm to say, get him in here. I never, saw I saw never him scores. down the background. Never scores. Oh, he's Just, busting on you. You gonna defend yourself on this one or what, bud? It's fine. I got Johnny. I can I can snipe Johnny. You can't oh! score. Him. Oh! All right, I gotta go eat the Bye, Johnny. Bro, Yo, I was gonna right. call you out and walk away. Yeah. You can't yeah. do that. You, you can't, can't do, do that. that. That's that's, that's 06 so behavior. That is behavior. He's making us look bad, dude. I was about to say, does he snipe you, Johnny, or is he just full of it? No, no, he doesn't snipe me because I find poke check him on every single breakaway. That's true. I could, I could verify. He doesn't that. score on me, and the it's only time true. he scores on me is when I feel bad for him because he's burned. <laughs> bad for him because <laughs> he's always wearing the pink jersey. You know, gotta get that confidence up. Wait, what's wrong with the pink jersey? I you know what he can tell you about the pink jersey. Get to get back here. Where is he at? <laughs> Tell him to get back here with that pink jersey. Yeah. Uh he's he's wearing the pink jersey now. It's kind of kind of brutal. <laughs> yeah. what's, what's this thing with the pink jersey? What is it? Uh so basically, if we, we do a shootout every every day before the game, uh or every practice before the game, last practice, we do a shootout. And if you score, you go off to the side. If you uh don't score, you go for another round. And so the way it works is the loser. Uh, gets a pink uh, number 69 jersey, and they have to wear it. <laughs> How long has he been wearing that jersey for? Week. A week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> been a good one. Oh, but he's got bricks for hands, I guess. Yep. yep. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, time is kind of winding down here. So in your opinion, I, I'm interested to see you guys on this one. Which one of you has the best goalie style? Now, I'm going to interject here. I'm going to interject. Westy, I think you got the best helmet, personally. But which one of you overall has the best goalie style in your eyes? Either M.A. or Westy. Westy has some sick pads. I was about to say, Westy's got yep. some sick pads, and yeah. M.A.'s setup is clean. And yeah. Really has, yeah. I'm saying I'm going Westy. I love M.A., but I got to go Westy. I mean, he has the custom trues. He has the custom everything. Ha has a bit of dust on him, for sure, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're pretty, pretty solid. <laughs> Westy, talk about mm -hmm. your custom helmet. How are you able to get that? Uh, it's it's a small company out in Philly. Um, it's a guy who I've had do my mask for the past five years. Um, guy I've gotten really close to. I just texted him, hit him up, said I'm on a new team, jotted some ideas down, and just let him sort of do his whatever artists do, wisdom, magic. <laughs> whatever, whatever artists do. Yeah, I don't know. And I'll say whatever he and, did do turned out very well. It looks fantastic. Yeah. It, it it looks awesome. Yeah. So also then what, what NHL goaltender do you guys like to model your game after most and why? And we'll start with Johnny on this one. Uh, I don't, I don't really know. I don't really watch the NHL like that. I asked, I asked Zane and Galley that question last week, and they're like, "Yeah, we we don't really watch the NHL." I'm like, what? I uh, I do watch the condensed down games, and uh, I would say I love the way quick plays. Ooh, okay, that's a good answer. I like that. We talking like prime time quick or like modern day quick? Time, yeah. Okay. Prime yeah, time that's kind of nasty. Yeah, when he uh, went on that Stanley Cup run, he was he was disgusted. Yeah. disgusted. I would no, I would say Bennington and uh, quick most definitely. Dude, Bennington's just a he's just a goon. Bennington just wants to fight. He's a beauty, dude, he's a beauty. He's a hockey yeah. guy. That, he is, he that, is that, a that, hockey that, guy, but like, hockey. dude, like I've watched him get ejected from multiple games just because he wants to beat the crap out of somebody because they looked at him wrong. Game is game, dude. You gotta give him <laughs> just give him props. He's game is game. <laughs> That's awesome, Westy. Who do you model your game after most, and why? I was always a big Flurry fan. Mm, um, I like I that idea. I like that. I think that's where the athleticism comes into, um, into my play. It's just trying to offset that athleticism with a little bit more technicality, maybe. <laughs> the flower power is within Westy. And then yeah. Sean, I know you're a Capitals fan, so I think I know who your answer is going to be, but just give it to us anyway. 
I love, I love, uh, right now, I love Charlie Lindgren. I actually don't like Darcy Kemper that much, but I feel like uh, every Capitals fan would agree with you on that, honestly. Yep. I like, I like Shep for sure. Shep Daddy, yeah. yeah. Bam away. I'm love him. <laughs> uh, also love Bennington. Used, used to really, really love him. And I mean, I've been ejected about as many times as he has. So, uh, <laughs> And then, is that is that is that what the ejections are coming from? You watching Bennington ejection? Yeah, 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 yeah probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm be more then, like Bennington. Oh, here's a. <laughs> and then uh, UC Soros, love Ooh, UC. Soros. I like that. I'm surprised you didn't say Braden Holpe. I was expecting you to say Braden Holpe being a cast. Back in the day, I wore number seventy. I was about to say Braden Holpe there a little bit. That, yeah, that makes for sense. sure. So this question is going to be interesting too, and I'm sure you guys as goalies definitely have some weird pregame rituals. Who who here probably has some pregame rituals that are worth noting? Anything different out of the normal? Johnny's a bit of a nutcase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just taking shots at you straight out of the gate, man. Yeah, so uh, I always retape my game stick. I do a half toe with, uh, with a puck out line. And okay. then, like, I would say 30 minutes before, like, 45 minutes to 30 minutes before the game start, before we get on the ice for warm-ups, I stretch. I do my uh, ball work. And uh, with my ball work, I use my glove. And then as I'm about to stretch, I do five on each hand and then count down from one, count down to one, and then finish it off with like a chest save with the ball. Yeah, you're right. He is a little bit of a nutcase, Shabby, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I don't really have anything. I kind of, I used to have a lot of superstitions and then I kind of got rid of them because I felt like they weren't really helping anything. So I, uh, the only one I really kept was I'll do this not just in games, but in practice too. Uh, if I'm playing well, I'll take an even number of sips of water. And if I'm playing bad, I'll take an odd number just to change something up. Now that might be the weirdest thing I think. Yeah, that's that's you, one of them. That's the that's pretty much the only one I have. Have you like forgotten to take an even number when you're supposed to take an even number? And then like you guys lose or something? No, no, no. But then like if I if I if I take an odd number by accident, I'll just take another even if I'm not thirsty. <laughs> what? Yeah. Westy, please tell me you're not you're not crazy like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't really do anything out of the ordinary. I mean, I just do basic stretching. I find the more the more I think about the game, normally the worse I do. So I'm trying to just keep lighthearted, talk with guys, jam out to the music, just not focus yeah. on the game until it's mm -hmm. go time. And now, one thing I wanted to question you guys is I saw Hannah did a question with you guys in the Roar blog earlier. Shout out to Hannah. For if you weren't playing, you know, hockey, in your case, goalie, what profession would you choose and why? And Johnny, I'm coming at you specifically on this one because I think I saw you wanted to be a SoundCloud rapper. No, no, no. A rock opera singer. What is that? I'll be honest here. I'm not 100% sure. I saw a video of it and I was like, that is sick. I want to do that. Dude, so what is this? Like Van Halen, like going Argh! at the Sydney Opera House? Or what is this? Like, I'm pretty sure. So... You know what, like, opera is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, yeah. I think it's that, but with rock. <laughs> I'm being... Okay. <laughs> How did you even stumble upon right. this profession is my question. Like, what were you looking on Indeed and something? This rock opera singer position game up, or what? I really don't know. I, I don't know. I just saw it one day, and I was like, that's sick. I mean, it is awesome. I'm not going to lie to you. Honestly, if you were a rock opera singer, I would I would come to your concert. I would. I would I would I appreciate you. that. I you know what? Thank you, Josh. You're welcome. I get you I, little tickets. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, you can get one for the whole fam, but I'm sure there maybe hasn't been a whole lot of support for you in the rock opera singer business. Listen, I'll tell you one thing. I bet on myself. So if I really go through with this, I'm I'm making it big. I'm I'm making it big. In the words of JJ McCarthy, bet. <laughs> Good man. Yeah. What what about you guys before we wrap it up? I know this man wants to be a rock opera singer if he's not between the pipes. What about you two? If if you're not between the pipes, where are you at? Couldn't tell you. I uh my mom was a dog walker for a bit. I love dogs, I love animals. Yeah, yeah I so mentioned I saw you singing that too. A yep. dog walker is, is is that like a lucrative business here or what? No, not really, but like I just <laughs> I love animals so much and I I I would spend my life with animals. I support that. So Westy, what about you, boss man? Uh, I've always just pictured myself if I wasn't doing hockey, I was probably just going to be in the army or something. Salute, just, salute to you, soldier. Salute, <laughs> salute to you. Well, with that, 
Johnny DiClemente, Luke Schaub, and Eric West. Thank you for joining us on this edition of The Roar. I'm Joshua Gerhardt. Find us on YouTube, Hershey Cubs The Roar, as well as at Hershey Cubs on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, or Hershey Cubs on Facebook. Hit that like button, subscribe, and or follow us on all accounts. Fear the roar.